Hello Commanders and welcome to this video for Infinite Lagrange. Today we want to take a look into what ships should you build first. So what are the first frigates, um, destroyers, especially frigates and destroyers you should build. Now I know it will always depend on um, the ships you have available and um, like for me I'm still looking to get some ships like the Mistral, I really would like to get that one. I hope to get also additional modules for the Marshall Cruise. I also want to get the Predator B version, so there's still a lot to get. Now, like in this case, the research agreement, um, I will just pull it because every filter I add will take out one of the ships I try to get. Um, let's see, what Elfin, useless for me, I already got it, so that's just some tech points there. Um, Bad luck. So let's go back into what ships we built. First of all, you want to build a few frigates that you can take out some basic pirates. As you see, I do use a total of nine frigates here: three Carillion, three Norma, three Xeno Stingers, and I can kill up to level five pirates, maybe even higher. <laughs> I didn't had the chance to try it yet. Level five was the highest I have around here. With these nine um, frigates, I also have enough frigates built for my main mission. Um, it was the one before, unfortunately I cannot go back, where we had to build, I can't remember, eight or nine frigates. So for me, this is a perfect start. Frigates have very small storage capacity, um, therefore it does not really matter too much what you build. If you build FG300, they would be much cheaper, I agree on this, but um, you can't do so much with an FG300. If you take a look into the capacity, it only 1800 storage capacity. Um, I do have the special type here with 1200, so that's really nearly nothing. The standard FG300 comes in with 2000 storage capacity. If you have them, you don't have to scrap them. You can also just add them to your mining fleet to increase the resource output. And this is something really important to think about. Early in game, you do need in special a lot of metal. Metal is the bottleneck 99% of the time. While you can compensate quite a lot with the main missions, it will get rare at one point. Therefore, what I do is, before I go sleeping, I recall my fleet that is mining the metal zones and I do add all of my ships to it. This way it has bigger storage capacity and that means I do get a higher metal yield. Now. That is where it's getting really interesting, because as soon as you can build destroyers, you do have a very interesting option in the AC721. Why the AC721? A lot of you will already know this. The AC721 comes already in with a very big storage capacity of, uh, of 18,000 um, units. And you can upgrade it two times um, with a total of additional 6% times 10, so 60%. You can see here, um, this system gives you 6,000, so the 6% are 720 times 10, are an additional 7,200 storage capacity. So if we add 7,200 to the existing 18,000, we are at 15, uh, 25,000 storage capacity. It's the highest storage capacity you can get in this area. If you look at any other ship, um, for example, I do like the Tundra. Um, Tundra support will give you 10,000. Aircraft carrier will also give you 10,000. And that is the range you are looking at for all others. So basically you do get twice or nearly three times as much storage, ca storage capacity with an AC721. And this is where it's getting discussable. Depending on your playstyle and the position where you are. If you are in a big alliance, you have some allies around you and you say, I want to focus on getting the highest amount of resources possible. 
then it is absolutely um, legit to build AC721 um, in the generic version to get the highest possible storage capacity and therefore the highest mining output, the highest mining yield. Now, for me, when I do this, I did this quite a few times in the past seasons, but I always get into the problem that you still have to pay 8 comment points for each of these um, destroyers. You can build a total of 15, so that is 120 comment points, um, which is quite a lot. And second, you have to build them, which costs you quite a few resources. So this season, therefore, I will go a little different way. I'm not going to build the generic type version, I'm going to build the aircraft type version. Yes, the aircraft type version has a lower storage capacity from the base and it can only upgrade it once and also here it's a smaller upgrade. So overall I do lose quite a lot of storage capacity. But the AC721 still brings you or gives you a very big storage capacity in total, around 15,000 if I remember right when I calculated it, and it can carry two corvettes. Now, this makes it a real dual purpose ship for me, because for the time that I'm not fighting, for the time like when going to sleep or when I don't really have much time or not much is going on, I do use it as additional storage capacity in my mining fleet. And as soon as there's city takeovers or I have to go into some fights, um, you do have a back row ship, meaning it is very likely not going to be attacked and it carries corvettes. Now, as said, this is, um, it's not the best solution, it is a compromise, yes, but it allows you, if you build 15 of these, you can bring in, for example, already 15 of your T-800 and you still have 15 um, additional Corvette spaces. So 15 T-800 plus, for me, I will probably go, I, I love Nebula Chaser, full scan version, so another 10 that's 25, that gives me 5 more space for the cellular defender. Um, I might change my mind and early in game also the cellular defender might be better because um, it has a higher damage output, you can see here around nearly 5000 anti-ship without any um, skilling yet, while the nebula chaser pulls only got 3600. The good thing about the Pulse version is it is good against defense as well as ship, um, but it's a different story. So early in game the enemy um, armor is not so high, meaning the Cellular Defender probably is a better choice. It depends what ships you have and also what you like most, but this will allow you to bring a total of 30 Corvettes in times of war, when taking cities, when fighting other players. and while you sleep it still allows you to really increase that really very very important resource yield in special for metal by a lot because you still have this high storage capacity output. Now as I said there are different kinds of players, different situations you might be in. Um, I know we have players here that say hey um, I don't really care about the resources, I might be a little bit slower, but I am strong, so I really focus on my fighting fleet and I will not compromise in any way. Yes, this will make your fighting fleet stronger and as long as you don't have big losses, um, there's no problem with this because let's be honest, if we take a look in our base, um, and you know this from my other videos already, as soon as you can build um, aircrafts, which is coming, uh, where do we have it here, in zone 5, you can build some of the strongest fleet compositions. You do not really have to go down to 8 or 9 where you can build carriers to have one of the strongest fleets. So as soon as you hit 5, you are usually already fine and you can say, I focus really on my fighting fleet. Now, as I said, the extreme other kind of player is saying, hey, 
I am going to farm till I die, till I really finished building everything. And for these players, sure, it will be beneficial to focus on the AC721 um, generic version because they have the highest storage capacity. But for people like me, somewhere in the middle saying, I want to farm because I want to build my base quick. And at the same time, I want to be still helpful in taking over cities in PvP or maybe just fighting some pirate bases. Um, that's an interesting way in between to go. Now, I'm very curious, what kind of player are you? How do you play this? What are you doing exactly there? Um, let me know in the comments and as usual, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and then I'll see you on the next video again.